This is the tutorial for concept 13, skill number one that deals with angles. And so let's take a look at what we are going to be dealing with here. So first of all, it talks about a line. And so a line is, is straight and extends without end. And that's shown with these arrows. So you see how there's an arrow here to the left of M and, and then above and to the right of N there's an arrow. So those arrows mean that it goes on without end. And then we're dealing with a ray as well. And so a ray is when we have an end point here at A, and then it only goes off in one direction. And so it's going off towards B and past B because of this arrow here. Now there are two different ways to signify what a line is or to signify a ray. And so you can either use the word form here, line MN, or they could have said NM would be the same exact thing. So they could have turn that around. Or we could use this notation over here where we have the arrow, like a hat, on top of the M and the N. And see how it has the arrows on both sides? That means that it is a line that extends without end. Where on this one, they show AB with the line going just past the B with the arrow past the B. And that signifies what we've got here. See, it, it starts at A and it continues on past B. So if we have two rays, what we could end up doing is we could put them together and have the endpoints meet at one point, like they do here. And then what we've formed is an angle. And so angle 1 is one way to represent this, because there's a 1 right here. Or we could call it angle Q, and that's what it says here. And that's what this symbol just means right here. It's the symbol we use for an angle. And so it allows us to write down things quickly, because instead of writing the whole word angle, we just use this little symbol. It looks like an L, but at an angle. We can also represent it with three points. And this is more the typical way of representing it. So there's two ways to do it. So we can start with this point here, P, Q, R, or R, Q, P. So R, Q, P. But the important thing is that since Q is the angle, that the vertex... Since this is the vertex, that means the vertex needs to be in the center between the two. So notice how Q is in the center here, Q is in the center here, and that's what we need. So since Q is, this in, is the vertex, the vertex needs to be in the center. And that means that we're kind of going around to show what the angle that is, either PQR or RQP. So we're going to end up having to uh, explain how or how to signify a an angle, and this is two of the ways we can end up doing it, or actually three. This way here, we're not going to use as much, because if they give us an angle and they ask us for what that angle is, I want either the angle from the vertex or the angle from the three points. So if it says an acute angle, an acute angle means that it's smaller or less than 90 degrees. The word acute comes from a Latin-based word, which means point or edge or sharp. And so that's what we see here. See, when it's less than 90 degrees, this point seems to be sharper than it would be if this were greater. So a right angle is one in which it forms exactly 90 degrees. And so we'll see that with this symbol. The symbol means a 90 degree angle. So you have to have that symbol in order to determine whether it's truly right or not. Obtuse. Obtuse comes from a Latin-based word also, which means that it means beaten down to the point of dull. And so that's what they have here. They signify it with this word because when we have an angle that's bigger than 90 but less than 180, that's obtuse. And you see how this angle, this point, seems duller than this point here, where this one's sharp. So acute means less than 90 degrees. Obtuse means greater but less than 180. Because if we had 180 degrees, then we've got ourselves a straight angle. And so a straight line would just be exactly 180 degrees. So <clears throat> we're going to have to be able to explain if we were given this angle, know that this is acute, obtuse, right with the symbol, or a straight line means a straight angle. Well, let's take a look at some problems that we might end up seeing. So before we get to those problems, we got to understand this term here, complementary. So complementary means to uh, fulfill, to make complete. And that's what we're doing here. We're taking two acute angles and we're complementing each other to make something full, like a right angle. And that's what we want to do. So complementary angles add to make 90 degrees.
And so whenever we've got an angle that is less than 90, like 50 degrees, if we wanted the complement of it, we'd have to find the angle that sums to make the 90 degrees. Where supplementary, supplementary here, means that it needs to sum to make 180 degrees. So supplementary means to fill out and um, fill from a lesser value. So 140 is a lesser value than 180. So to fill it out to make 180, I'd have to add the 40 degrees. And so 140 plus 40 makes 180. So the way I remember it is C comes before S in the alphabet, just as 90 comes before 180. So let's take a look at some problems that we might end up seeing. So here it says a complement of measure of, a or of angle N. Uh, measures and then they're asking us well, what is that complement so we want to find the number that adds to make 90 degrees so basically what we've got is if I kind of redraw this here's the 54 degree angle here we want to find out what is this missing angle right here and so what we're going to end up doing is we're going to subtract since 90 degrees is what we want the two angles to make or add to equal we're going to subtract the 54 degrees from that 90 degrees, and that's going to give me 36 degrees. And that would be the complement of the angle N. And uh, then the supplement of angle N, well, supplement means that we want that same angle here, and I'll just redraw it there. There's a 54 degree angle. We want the angle that makes it or fills it out. And so we want this angle. Now notice this is going to be an obtuse angle, bigger. And so we know that two angles that are supplementary add to make 180. So if we take the angle N away from 180, 54 degrees, we subtract that from 180, that leaves us with 126 degrees. And that would be the supplement of angle N. So here they're asking us for the vertex of the angle at right. And so the vertex is where the two rays come together, or the end point of the two rays. So our vertex is this point right here. And so we just name that point by just writing the letter F. That represents the vertex in this case. Now they want us to write or name two angles. Uh, what are the two names for? for an angle at right, and so there's a few different ways we can say. We can say angle F, and again we can use this notation here. We could also say angle EFG. Now notice that they're looking for this angle, and I have to have F in the center. So the vertex always has to be in the center when I'm naming the angle. What's the other way I can do it? Well, I did EFG, I could also do GFE. So angle G. F, E. Again, notice that the vertex is again in the center between these other two points that make up that angle. Well, those are the types of problems that you'll see for the Concept 13 Skill 1. Good luck.